Good morning, buddy. You're pretty friendly through the fence, huh? Yeah. Easy. Good. Today's day one with this Mustang. Haven't really started working with him yet. I've spent some time just hanging out in his pen last night. If you haven't watched the first video, I made a video of bringing him home and from the adoption. So you can watch that before or after you watch this one, really. He's pretty curious. Is that a halter? You want to wear that today? Maybe in a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to sneak in his pen over here. Let's see how he reacts to me being on this side of the fence. He's been pretty brave so long as people are on the other side of the fence. Hey, bub. So he's settling in pretty well. He's pooped a lot, which is a great sign. Although some of it's been kind of splatty, so he's probably a little bit stressed out, which is okay. And he definitely wants out of here. He's already fallen in love with Tuxedo and Aurora. He would like to go be friends with them. So he's a little bit stressed out a minute ago when we came out and then Rory ran to go find Tuxedo. He was like, wait for me, I want to come with. But he's been finding what little grass there is in here. And um, he's ate, eaten all his hay. I also set out two food options for him. I put out some dry alfalfa pellets and some wet alfalfa pellets. He hasn't quite figured those out yet. But he's drank a lot of water, which is great. And he's been eating out of this hay bag, which Tuxedo showed him how to do. So, settling in pretty well. I think he's ready for a first training session. So we're going to get right to it pretty soon. Don't knock over my tripod, please. Don't do it. Don't knock it over. You're going to scare yourself. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm way zoomed in. I was taking pictures of him. He just kind of came right up and was like, what are you doing? He's pretty brave. I'll get to work in his feet around a little bit here. All right, howdy, everyone. Today is day one working with my new project, not saying. He's over there hiding behind the tree. He's been pretty friendly and uh, settling in pretty well. Um, first impressions, he was a pretty um, dominant horse in the pens. He was definitely the alpha of the pen he was in. So um, I'm just definitely going to start by moving his feet out a little bit, making sure he can retreat from my space and not get too comfortable with um, trying to approach me because when dominant horses get a little too comfortable, they might try and start to uh, see if they can push you around. So I'm going to go ahead and start by pushing him around a little bit. Just getting his feet moving and his brain moving and change directions a little bit in this pen. Um, he's also very curious and pretty brave, even though he's snorty. Um, I took some videos this morning um, of his personality and I think he's got quite a bit of personality. So it should be really fun to work with. I'm going to go ahead and start by just getting him to move out when I apply gentle pressure. Um, I don't think he'll be too hard to get moving. If I need to use a little more pressure, I'm going to use this stick and then slowly increase it until he moves his feet the direction I want them to go. draw he has. He's pretty ready to come say hi to me. 
So if he turns in like that, I'm going to kind of invite him in. And I'll let him lip me because he's just trying to figure out what I am. If he loses interest.
right stepping out of his space. So uh, Mustangs see your presence as kind of pressure on them. So I'm using that pressure to get his feet moving. I'm also using it as a reward when he does what I like. So let's switch directions for this one again. that he gets rewarded when he faces me and puts two eyes on me and stands still. And he's very observant. Right now he's paying attention to the trucks going down the road way off in the distance. Good boy. So he kind of takes in all the surroundings.
And I'm just kind of casually flinging this at him, getting him used to this motion. A little bit of desensitizing in motion. Oh, that was nice. I didn't really ask you to do that. But that was nice. We're about ready to start working on approach and retreat here. Let's see what he thinks if I just kind of enter his space bubble. Some horses will have a much larger bubble to start. Some will want nothing to do with you. If he makes a sign that he's interested in coming into me, good. I'm going to ease off a little bit, take some of that pressure off. Good. That way he gets rewarded for standing still and being interested in me. Good. Oh, no. Quite. Good. There we go. He wanted to leave, but he came back. So he got a little reward for that. Yeah. You're thinking, aren't you, buddy? better. When he engages and, in, and acknowledges me, that's when he's going to get a little bit of a reward. When he does something I really like, like, come on, reach out and touch it. You can do it. Engage. You can do it. I believe in you. There we go. Good. That's when I'm going to come all the way over here and give him a long break to think about that. He's kind of nervous with me approaching him. He'd rather be the one to approach me. But he stood there, reached out and bumped my hand with his nose, and nothing bad happened. That's how the horses learn. <coughs> He did something that was a little bit scary, made him a little bit nervous, and nothing bad happened. You can see now he's licking and chewing, is going through his brain. Oh, that wasn't so bad after all. That's kind of what we try to aim for with these wild horses. It's not to try and force anything on them, but to try and say, hey, I know it's scary, give it a try. If they do something good, you back off, you say, hey, look, you did it. Nothing bad happened. Yeah, nothing bad happened, buddy. He's got a little bit of sunburn on his nose. He's a little bit nervous. He's pawing a little bit at these flies, so I can't wait till I get him cleaned up with some Green Horse Organics fly spray and some uh, baby face for his face. Look, nothing bad happened, and he let me come right up to him. That's a very good boy. That's a very good boy. Can I come again? Yeah, you're a little bit nervous, aren't you? Good oh boy. I think he's going to be just gorgeous once I get some Green Horse Organic shampoo and conditioner on him. Hopefully we can whiten up that mane and tail some. Good boy. Yeah, my hand's on the other side now. Can you engage again? And then I'll back off. Can you engage? I don't want him to be kind of distant like this. I want him to take an active role. Good. Good boy. Good boy. See? <coughs> Nothing bad happened. So I'm going to move his feet a little bit. Go back and forth between... Good boy. Desensitizing him to my approach and sensitizing him to me moving his feet around. It's important to have both. If I only worked on moving his feet around, soon he'd get really sensitive to my presence and think every time I get in this pin, I want him to run. I want him to go. He's not going to be very confident with standing still. Whereas if I only worked on getting him to stand still this first day and um, accept my touch, I didn't ask you to stop. Oh, oh good. Now I asked you to stop. Very good boy. He's catching on now. He's starting to 
want to stop it. As you can tell, I tried about three or four times on that circle. But uh, like I said, if you practice too much or you're getting them to stand still, like that touch, they might get too good at it and get kind of dull if you ask them to move their feet. So I'm going to go back and forth and practice both. wants to come in now. He's like, hey, wait a minute. When I stood still and faced you, that was pretty nice. I got to catch my breath. I didn't have to move. It didn't turn out to be so bad after all. I want to do that all the time. I'm like, okay, I'm glad you want to do that. But only when I ask. Just like that. Very good boy. He's pretty smart. Can I come up with my left hand? I'm starting to push him a little bit. I'm starting to approach faster. Kind of test his confidence a little bit. Come on, engage with me. Good. Very good. Very good boy. Yeah, nothing bad happened. He's like, hey, wait a minute. I've kind of found my sweet spot. It's right over by you. I get to, I get to catch my breath. And I get to stand still. And it's a little bit scary. But I think I feel, I'm starting to feel a little bit safe by you. Good boy. He's getting pretty smart. So, um, with horses that have a bigger bubble, I might come in and start approaching them with this stick. Just using it as, um, an extension of my body so that I don't have to get so close to him and put so much pressure on him. Good. Same thing. As soon as he engages with it and <coughs> kind of reaches out to it, that's when it goes away. So he gets rewarded for being curious. He gets rewarded for being brave. He gets rewarded for trying for me. Yeah. That's very nice. <coughs> and I'm going to come up in different ways. He wants to move. I'll go ahead and make him move. It's his choice. I can't force him to stand still. But uh, he'll find, he, he's already starting to figure out that running around in circles like this is less fun than standing still and uh, accepting touch. So if he wants to move away, that's okay. That's his decision. I might try and stick with him if he's only moving a little bit. But if he's pretty much decided to go, I'm going to push him around a little bit. That's going to turn and face me again. Give him that reward by backing off. And then we'll practice again, practice approaching. Yeah, that approach from a bit of a different angle did it. So that time he didn't totally decide to leave. He kind of jumped back a little bit. So I followed him with it a little bit, just so much that I wasn't going to push him away. And as soon as he engaged again after that scary thing happened, I backed off. So I kind of approached the side of his face. I'm trying to start practicing approaching from different angles. Like, <coughs> right over here. But if he decides to go, that time I didn't think I could follow him and have him settled and stop, so I'm just going to work his feet a little bit.
time to process.
brave when I was on the other side of the gate. Let's see. Too bad this isn't your uh, EMM horse. Huh? Too bad this isn't your EMM horse. Yeah. I think he'd be a good one. There you go. Oh, yeah, that was scary. I went in and snuck a touch on the other side of his cheek, which I haven't really approached too much with my hand yet, and then backed off right away. Sometimes it's about being sneaky. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, 
I'm stroking his neck on the other side now, just a little bit. Got a little uncomfortable, so I'm going back to the cheek. I'm going to follow until he engages again. Can you come back to me, buddy? You're a pretty smart guy. I think you know why I want you to come back to me. He's lost attention again. Come back to me. Come back to me and all this pressure goes away. Thinking about it. What are you thinking about it? It's like a game of chicken almost. Yeah. Almost there. Yeah, there you go. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Starting to get a little confident about walking up to you. That's good. So I've already touched this side of the neck with my stick. So I know he's going to be more or less okay with me stroking his mane right here. A little bit of his shoulder. Good boy. Good He's almost ready to leave, so I'm just going to wait until he gets a little more accepting of this. Good, that's better. That's better. Good boy. So you really have to reward what's going on in their brain at the time that you release that pressure. So even though he was sitting there letting me stroke it, he was kind of being evasive with his body language and his eyes. So I waited until I could tell he was like, eh, this isn't so bad. And then I reward him for thinking that. It's not so much about what they do that you reward, it's kind of what they think. Once again, he's kind of looking off into the distance, kind of shutting me out a little bit, even though I'm able to stroke his neck. Good. And he comes back to me. There we go. Good boy. He's going to get a big reward for that one. So I'll go ahead and sit here for about 30 seconds. Let him decompress a little bit. Yeah. You're a smart man, aren't you? You're a smart little man. Alright, now let's come again to this side and start working that. still engaged. Well, he's still thinking, hey, this isn't so bad after all. That's when I'm going to go away, give him a little break, give him a little reward, take the pressure off. Even though he's starting to come around to this, it's still pressure. He's still like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's about being sneaky, like I said. I went from an area he's pretty comfortable with to when he's not, and then as soon as I did that, I walked away. He kind of didn't have time to really think about that too much. It was just kind of like, whoa, ah! and then it was gone. He was like, whoa, that wasn't bad after all. Good boy, thank you for stopping. So uh, the more times I can go in and out again, 
the more times he gets comfortable with me approaching. It's all about repetition. So I'm going to do a lot of this walking back and forth right now. Just going to walk in, touch, walk away. Really helps their confidence. If I can do this a hundred times over, can I touch the top of your nose? Thank you. Let's get a better touch. Touch the top of your nose. There, touch me here. Good boy, I'll let him yawn it out. So the yawns and the licking and chewing are good signs because it means he got nervous. He tightened up, clenched up his teeth, he tightened his lips, and uh, then he realized it wasn't so bad, so he's letting out that tension. So I'll let him process that a minute. You dead? You dead processing? Yeah. I want to touch the bridge of your nose. I want to touch the bridge of your nose. so he doesn't get stuck in this one spot. Very. 
very good. I'm all the way over here.
boost your confidence. So he's kind of backing himself in the corner here. I want to make sure that he still has the opportunity to go forward if he feels too pressured. I don't want him to feel trapped in this corner. Can I scratch me? Does that feel good? Yeah, that does feel good, doesn't it? Because if he feels trapped, he might feel inclined to use those feet. Still a little bit weird. Oh, see that nose wiggling? Yeah, I see that nose wiggling. You can't hide it from me. It's all over now. Like, okay, I give up. I give in. Still trying to pretend he doesn't like it. I'm just going to get one more touch in. Because he got too close to this fence corner area for my liking. So I'm going to move him around again. Moving out, changing directions. Even got a little hind quarter yield at Liberty. I uh, started touching his face, his neck, his shoulders, scratching his mane, and uh, things we need to work on are getting him a little more comfortable with approach and retreat. So I want to be able to walk right up and put a hand anywhere on his face and his neck um, without him flinching or being evasive before I can start working on that halter. And then uh, my next session, I'm going to do a lot more desensitizing to this stick, rubbing him all over his face, and uh, then start working on the string going all over his face. After he's good with that, if I can fling that string all around his face and his neck, and I can walk up and touch him anywhere I want on his face, his neck, his shoulders, then I'll start introducing the halter and teaching him to lead. So uh, we'll be back later. Tell you what, it is so nice to have your pasture in your backyard. I love tuxedo, yes. What are you doing? Were you drinking his, are, were you seriously drinking his water? You brat. Now I don't know if he actually drank all that water or if he's even drank any water at all. Hey buddy, have you been drinking water or has Tuxie been taking it all? Huh? I did not know you could reach that. You're such a brat. You're such a brat. Well, I'll have to move that then. All right, so he's had at least uh, three or four hours of a break, so I'm gonna come back in here and see what he remembers. And I'll try and keep the session shorter so that I don't lose his attention like I did last time. So 
So I'm going to start with uh, moving them out again. Brushing those legs with this stick. Taking it away. Something scary happened, but nothing bad happened. By doing that, we're starting to get him used to the idea of having his feet touched by something. Once he's super comfortable with me throwing things all around his legs, that's when I'll start rubbing them down with my hands. And eventually I'll be asking him to pick them up. Good boy. approach and retreat. Oh, so scary. Poor guy. Got a stressed out bowel, huh? That's not uncommon for Mustang to get diarrhea the first couple days. They're very stressed out, so it takes a bit of a toll on their gut.
sleeve rope. It is not like the stick and string game. That's okay. I don't mind you doing that. even touching his back leg a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. These babies learn pretty quick. Yeah. He thought about taking his leg away and
starting to realize that's not so bad. The more times it happens, and I reward him for standing still and bringing his face back to me, and nothing terrible happens to him, he doesn't get hurt, the more confident he's going to get with that. But it's about repetition and making sure it's a good experience overall. Even though he gets scared, nothing bad happens. Scratch your back a little bit. He's a little bit wary. So I'm going to take close attention to his body language. Make sure I'm not pushing him too hard. The last thing I want to do is push him to the point where he becomes his clothes. He's getting a little bit antsy and so I'm going to make sure I'm going When he comes back to me, I'll go ahead and take that pressure. We'll go ahead and try that on the other side. Yeah. 
it again just a little bit softer that time. Kind of graze my fingers over it. But good. If I if he gave me any indication that he was going to um, defend himself from being touched in that danger zone, I'm just not going to push him today. We'll wait till we've got some better trust. Uh, oh, he didn't like me switching hands there. So I'm just going to kind of do this a little bit, kind of get him used to this motion. You know, I'm reaching towards him a little bit faster than normal if he's not getting hurt. So I'm going to do this until he settles. He didn't really like this motion. There you go. All the time I'm going to be paying attention, making sure I don't push him too far to the point where he thinks he needs to run away or defend himself. Introverted horse, I don't think. Oh, hi. You know, my scratches. He doesn't seem to hold back too much or try and hide his feelings when he feels uncomfortable. So, um, I'm a little more confident with that kind of horse. All right. I have my halter and lead rope now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my halter over my shoulder like I'm carrying it like a purse. I'm going to start to introduce him to this. I left it hanging on the side of his pen all morning, and he's had the chance to come over and sniff it, check it out, so it's not really a new object. So I'm going to approach him, let him see what he thinks about it, and I'm going to take it away before he loses interest. Yeah, see, he's still interested. He's pretty curious. I love that he's starting to follow me around now. He kind of sees me as a safe spot. Go ahead and start rubbing him down with this rope a little bit. He still wants to smell it. I'm going to kind of do what I did with the stick, where the end of it rubs the rest of his body. But uh, part of it was still there for his nose to sniff. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. All this seems. Thought about leaving there. Pick up some flies. And rub that spot. There we go. Until he shows a little more interest in what's going on. I want him to actively participate in what we're doing. So I want to reward him when he's engaged, and when he's curious, and when he's willing to learn. sneaking this on him or anything. I'm being careful, but I'm not being a sneak. Oh, that one slapped him a little bit. Thank you for standing there. Good. Oh, my boy. No, he doesn't like kisses yet. He'll learn. So basically the idea is I get him used to each step of putting the halter on. So the first thing I want to get him used to is throwing that lead rope over so I can take this halter down and use it with my hands. That's what I do when I touch my horses. Just come right up. I'm going to let them know I'm coming. But, uh, I'm going to touch my horses. I'm going to throw that 
that knee drop over, and then I'll go to catch them with the pom -pom. So I'm getting them comfortable with this step first. I'm going to wash, rinse, and repeat until you can fix nothing up. about that hand coming up to touch him on the face, but he's getting better.
sending this side to me. See if I can move just those shoulders over a little bit. spot now. I don't like that spot. Second to think about that. Yeah, you see? You think it. We'll go back to the other side. See where we're at with this lead rope now. Because I want each part of this halting process to be as smooth as possible before I go and tie that halter off. I don't like to just slip it on whenever possible. I could, if I wanted to, I could get a halter on him right now. I mean, and I can go ahead and show you. Sneak it on him. Bring the sleeve broke down. I can kind of probably sneak this around the back. And slowly creep my way. I mean, I can do this if I want to, but that's not what I want. Well, I heard someone say once that really kind of resonates with my program is. You want the first time you put a halter on your horse to be as good as the last time you ever put a halter on your horse. So he should stand there just as well behaved as if he's done it a million times. So we'll see where we're at. Okay. We'll see where we're at. Turn 
this over. Yeah, that was pretty good. Very good boy. We're going to repeat this a lot. Wash, rinse, and repeat till I'm sure he's got it down. And it's not just him trying to be good for me. I want him to know that this is okay. He's still a bit tense. That's okay. Just repetition is the only thing he needs now. Can you move your big fat head around? my arm up, he kind of tenses up, and he's like, nope, I want to be good, I want to be good, I'm a little scared, but I want to be good. Yeah. So I'll just keep doing this until it's no big deal to him at all. to look like a sleepy head, aren't you? I'll get you some more hay after this one, okay? Sound like a deal, buddy? from this side because uh, I don't know why you'd be doing that part of the haltering from the other side. So now that he's here at that step, let's see about touching his nose with this halter. Good. Good. Yeah. I can let him discover it for himself if he's comfortable with that. to make as many things his idea as possible. Good. See 
until it got good. I'm not going to move on to the next step if he makes a problem with the first step. Same thing, if he makes a mistake here, which he didn't, I would go back to fixing this. And once he got it good, I would take everything away, step away from him and pray. Then I would go all the way back to the beginning and build on that first step. Let's see. Good. I'll let him figure that out for a sec. Take it off. Try again. Good. Take it off. Try again. So basically, the idea is I'm put, just going up, putting a halter on a horse. If he makes a mistake with one of his steps, anytime I reach resistance, like right now, he's having a little bit of resistance just because he doesn't know this yet. I go ahead and practice it until it's perfect. Then I go all the way back to the beginning. to put his head in that sweet spot, I'm just going to reward him for that. And I'll try again. Good. Very good. Take it all the way. Just go on. Give him a little second.
to the sound and feel of this being tied on him. And he doesn't give one crap about this. I just rub the rubs together. A lot of horses find this weird. But oh, he wants to pull. I'm going to see if I can gently guide him back. I'm not going to start a fight with him. Because I won't win because this halter is not tied on me. start a big fight, but if he wants to lean against that, I'm going to bring him back to me. He just wants to eat this clip right now, I swear. This is what working with babies is like. Yes, you are a baby. You're a big baby, but you're a baby. Probably the easiest I've ever gotten a horse started leading. Usually I drop the rope on the ground and um, let them figure out how to give to pressure themselves and I'm going to do that in a minute. But because he was so eager to stay with me when I was leading him just with the rope around his neck, I wanted to see what he would do if I just pretended to lead him around like he's a rope horse and he actually did really well. Got stuck at some parts, and I was able to just use light pressure to get him to think through the situation and put his feet in the right place. As soon as he put his feet in the right place, I put some slack in that halter. He's a really smart boy who's, who's learning really quickly. So, uh, pretty proud of him. run around and figure that out for himself. So this way he gets used to the rope dragging around his feet. He gets
gets used to things touching his feet. Um, if he steps on that rope, he gets used to nose pressure and learns how to back off of it. And he just gets used to wearing it before I do too much leading with him. Like I said, this is usually, get out of my space. I don't want him in my space during this in case he has a freak out. This is usually the first thing I do to teach a horse to lead. So let them figure some things out on their own. Go. Get out of my space. Get out of my space. Get. Thank you. I had to pick up that pressure because he was not listening to me. He's doing so good about this. Sometimes Mustangs are like, ah, what's following me? It's a snake. But uh, he's really not too concerned about it. I just want him to step on this rope a couple times and get used to backing off of that pressure and thinking through a situation. So, so my camera battery died on me during that last video. So I just left him to hang out with this rope on while I went and charged it a little bit and got some food. So he's been hanging out with this halter and lead rope on him. Hopefully he's gotten a little bit more used to it by now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move him around a little bit and see what that looks like. Yeah, that was scary, wasn't it? Good boy. Oh, good boy. That wasn't a bad reaction at all. Good boy. Let's see if I can go up and fix this lead rope. Oh. Got it twisted, buddy. Good boy. Oh, thanks for bonking my camera. Oh, I know. I know. That's weird. Hang on. Ah, buddy, hang on. Oh, you're just gonna pull it tight again. Oh. It's okay. Hang on. We'll get back to leading in a second. Just gonna see what this looks like. Oh. Step on it. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. Oh. Switch directions again. Oh, I didn't like that he turned away from me. But. Oh. There we go. That's what I want to see. I want to see him get him stuck, get him caught up, and back. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. He thought through that. He realized, oh, if I just back off, that pressure goes away, then I can fix my feet and it's gone for good. So obviously he learned pretty well when he was sitting there by himself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this camera back in the corner and then pick my lead rope up and start teaching him to lead.
and looks in my direction, turns in my direction. He's looking like he wants to rear. Are you going to be a rearer? Oh, here we go. pretty quick. Just try and keep it as stress-free as possible. of small releases. It's not like I'm dragging him all over the pen. I'm just looking for one step at a time. Give him every opportunity I can to be a good boy. steps now. Hindquarters, I need to know that they'll move away when I ask them to.
very itchy. Yeah. Are you itchy? Take a while to learn to stand high nicely. Because uh, he's kind of got a busy brain. That's better. He just kind of wants to always be moving. So I'm just going to correct him when he wants to move. And then he'll realize that it still is nicer than me. I'm not always going to be asking him to do something. Sometimes I just need him to sit still and sit quiet right by me. Uh -uh. Maybe not that close to me. Thank you. Yeah, and the nice part about um, teaching them to give pressure with the, with the lead rope just on the ground, just leaving them with that lead rope on the ground. Not next to me. Okay, buddy. Comes pretty easy after that. Hold still. Hold still. After he holds still. Teach him to back off that pressure. Settles a little bit. I'm gonna help him out by 
asking him to move his feet. Hey, hey. Because he just cannot contain himself right now. Hey, hey. I gotta keep this up. He's kind of shutting down on me. Good. Until he goes forward. There we go. Now it gets a little bit of a warm. Oh, that's gonna be scary.
very splayed feet, so it'll be nice to get his feet handled and get a farrier on him soon. him. He just sometimes gets touchy about that face, especially right up here. But getting a halter on helps. Because if he were to try and avoid me, push his nose out to the side, he's not really doing it right now. I can gently guide him back to where I want him. feeling too much. So I'm just going to keep doing it without pushing him too much until he settles down a little bit. Does that feel nice? I saw you wiggle your lip a little bit. So the last thing I usually do with a horse, like a Mustang, is um, well, any horse. The last thing I do with them is usually something low energy. You know, leave on a note that makes them uh, look forward to the next section and not dread it. You want to put a horse up happy, not frustrated or confused. So, we'll just go in and put a little more confidence over what he already knows. A little more touchy on this side than the other one, I think. But I'm getting to touch all over his body now. Even his belly. Doesn't mind me rubbing down too much. He's just still a little bit headshot. So it's just going to take a little bit of repetition to get him over this. thing I'm going to do I'm going to grab some of this wet alfalfa pellets that I left out for him. He hasn't touched them yet. So I'm going to see if I can't persuade him to try it. Yeah, you want to give it a try? He's kind of hesitant to nibble. This is pretty common of mustangs. Um, not all of them will eat out of your hand right away. They're kind of afraid of grabbing onto you. I think partially it's because they don't want to seem like they're trying to bite you because they're afraid that you'll uh, get after them. So I'm just going to see if I can kind of try and shove this in his mouth. Hey, hey, hey. Got a little practice with this. Does that taste good? Got a little bit in the corner of his mouth there. I think he's decided it tastes good, so I'm going to try that again. You want to try it? He doesn't want to try it. 
Get a little bit in my hand. That's kind of falling apart. Hang on. Gonna go at the corner of the mouth like I'm putting a bit in. And I'm just gonna shove that alfalfa into his mouth. Because I need him to start eating sooner rather than later. And uh, alfalfa is usually a good starter for mustangs, this pelleted alfalfa. Because they don't know what grain is. I've had some of them take grain right away. But not all of them are going to do that. So uh, they're used to eating alfalfa in the holding pens. Um, this is just in a bit of a different form. So if I can get them to recognize that this is food, I'll have won that battle today. I've put this alfalfa just within Aurora's reach. I'm going to let him see if he wants to try that by example. Yeah, give it a taste. It's good, I promise. Try, buddy. Says I don't want to. Says I'm used to regular old uh, bales of alfalfa. Bring me the good stuff. All right. Well, I'm just gonna leave this in his pen for him, and maybe he'll give it a try sometime. That's usually what I do. I just leave it there 24/7. Eventually, they give it a try and decide it's not so bad. So uh, I'm gonna come back and work with them a little bit later. sit a second, then we're going to practice some leading, and then we're going to do a little desensitizing and I think we'll call it a day.
it at a good distance. If you get stuck, I just have to use a little bit of this halter pressure to get him moving. He's doing great. Desensitizing. I'm going to fling this just like I was before. So that gets him used to ropes moving all around, used to being halter, used to even accepting a saddle. He's swinging this over his back is going to be the foundation for him accepting me putting things on him. Eventually, it's going to help him when you accept the saddle. So I'm just kind of, I'm not throwing this at him, I'm not whacking it with him with it, although that's what he thinks I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of doing this like I've done it a million times before, I'm just kind of tossing it where it needs to go. There's a lot of bugs in my face. still like that and kind of tries to accept it a little bit more. I'm going to reward him by rubbing his face with this stick. Good, because that's his safe spot. He's catching on to this really quickly. Hey, I don't want you in my face. He's kind of the type that's a little more in your business, which makes him pretty easy in the scale of uh, halter training. He only had really a couple like wild moments. He got past them really quickly. But uh, as far as this desensitizing goes, I'm gonna make extra sure that uh, good boy that he doesn't crowd my space too much. Because if he gets in the habit of crowding my space, and he gets scared, he's going to want to be right on top of me, and I don't want that. So I'm going to make sure to get his legs, too. All over. Just kind of like I've done this every single day of his life. Just kind of pretending it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. notice my energy is really low. I'm almost like falling asleep over here. Throwing this as lazy as I can. Yeah. Yeah, it's no big deal, is it, buddy? Move it all over. All over. So pretty soon I'm going to want to touch those legs. And, uh, I'm going to test what I can touch. Pretty much once you get them used to something being flung at their legs. And something solid touching their legs. And you had a pretty good play. Oh, yeah. We found another spot. Right up on the inside of his back leg. He said, that's no fun. He said, I got gelded there a little while ago. Okay. Just gonna rub. I don't know if you can see where it is. It's about halfway between his top and his, uh, the rest of his body. Started rubbing that. And he kind of settles down really quick. I was worried he might try and kick out at me. Or kick out at this. He's a learner. Not everything has to be scary. Pretty quick to figure that out. Okay, so this side. Inside of him, I haven't done this here before yet. So I'm going to go ahead and flake my rope all around this side. And uh, he's not super spooky at all. He's definitely on the less spooky side as far as Mustangs go. Although he gets snorty sometimes. But, um,. Most Mustangs, when you start this, you'll probably have to start with a lot less energy. 
and uh, do it from further away. You might want to start, if your Mustang's really sensitive to your movements, you're going to want to start maybe just by doing this. Just by lifting the stick up a little bit and dancing this rope around. You definitely don't want to go in first time and do something like that. Although you want to eventually get them used to it. This guy's getting pretty good at getting used to it. So, I'll just rub him down with the stick. Touch his boundaries. See where I can touch, where he's comfortable with me. He says, yeah, I'm not sure I like that, but, you know, it was okay last time. Now I'm rubbing up his belly. Take a little break, buddy. So now I'm going to replace that stick with my hands. You'll see how comfortable he is with me. I've kind of done some of this before. Now I'm going to push him a little harder this time. Good boy. That wasn't so bad, now was it? if I try to move this leg. Once I can rub the leg all over, I start, and I start this from far away because you never know how they're going to react to you. Pull on their leg. Good boy. That was very good. That gives me a lot of confidence in him. Pick it up. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Start small on those feet. Getting them picked up. Let's see if I can go in with my hand now. What I do here is I have the lead rope around here. Go in and I'm leaning as far away from him as I can, just in case he decides to get ready. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Good boy. I just wait for a tiny second where he's not fighting me. Then I can go ahead and put that down. That's awesome. I don't think I've ever picked up feet on day one before. You're pretty awesome, buddy. I want him to be able to hold it still, too. I don't want every time I go to touch his leg, he gets nervous and gets it up. Good boy. I'm going to try for one little pickup. like this boy's doing pretty good. He's had a pretty good first day. I may be pushing it, but I want to try something I've never done on a first day. So we'll see if I regret it. What do you think, buddy? It's pretty scary, isn't it? He's like, I want to go home. I wouldn't usually try this with a horse so soon, but he's very good at coming back to me. Even when he's antsy, he stays with me. So uh, we're gonna see what a little walk will do for him.
think the hardest part is going to be getting footage because he's so in my space. I'll have to answer that call later. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah, that's Aurora. Come on, buddy. You're a little nervous, so you want to crowd me. That's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I get it. So I'm just going to gently nudge him out of my space if he gets too close. Come on, let's go on a walk. Good boy. You're doing so good. You're doing so good. Over here, buddy. Yeah, this way. It's kind of like trying to guide a little kid who's like, ooh, shiny penny. But he's pretty easy to come back to me. Yeah, you are. Good boy. He's a good boy. Come on. Good. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, it's just a pile of logs. It's getting a little bit nervous, so we'll make this a quick trip for sure. Real easy. Easy. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, come on. Come on now. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. Psst, 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 psst. Out of my space. Thank you. It's a little difficult to correct him and to film. Good boy. But I figured we might as well try some natural obstacles today. Good boy. Ready to go back in your pen? Ready to go up and get some dinner? Yeah, you are. Oh, a little bit scared. You got it, though. You got it. Yeah, good boy. There we go. This is one of the best parts of the day. Finally learning how to eat out of a feed pan. I uh, fed him some dry pellets by hand and it took a little bit, but he got the hang of those. And I just slowly brought up handfuls from the pan. And um, with each handful, I got a little bit closer to the pan. So we had to reach closer to it. Eventually figured out where those pellets were coming from. Now he's chowing down. Look at him, he's so happy. <laughs> so, uh, I think now that he's eating good, he'll uh, shine up and fatten up and look really pretty really soon. <laughs>